Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Guys, let's talk about it. Okay, let's let's take a few moments and talk about it. Uh, before I get into today's verbal dissertation, let me just mention, as many of you know, last night, uh, Ambassador Emmanuel Mwamba was detained, was arrested and detained. And the information we have so far, this is uh, Thursday, this is five minutes to 9 a.m. on a Thursday morning. What is the date today? Uh, it's Thursday, the 15th of June. The information we have is that he was apprehended at a car wash. Now, it's, it's very convenient, as all political parties do. It's very convenient to create a narrative around uh, a story that is unconfirmed. It's very easy to say, oh, he was beaten, he was bludgeoned, he was all of that. Of course, I'm not saying that that's not impossible. It is possible. It's happened in the past and it's, it's plausible. But until we have hard evidence, you know, short of someone recording the beating uh, or short of someone narrating the events as they unfolded, short of that, everything is innuendo, hearsay and gossip. All we know is that he has been apprehended, full stop. The police yesterday issued a statement where they said, we will let you know the details of the case tomorrow, meaning today. So we wait and see. I mean, Emmanuel is someone I, I respect and I love. He's Him and I are good friends. You know, I've known him for years. And of course, let me explain something to you, especially you young ones. You see, there's something called the six degrees of separation. When I was a kid, I would hear that phrase and it would confuse me. I'd say, what is the six degrees of separation? Well, basically, the premise of the six degrees of separation is that you know someone that knows someone that knows someone that knows me. There are six degrees of separation between us. And I said all of that to say this. When you get to my age, I'm 54, I keep saying this. Maybe I should stop saying my age. What do you think? Because, you know, it gets to a place where every, almost every one of my lives I talk about the age thing comes in. I don't think that we should always talk about that. Everybody knows how old I am. But, but, but my point is, when you get to my age, you, you basically know everybody. You know, there's, there's, it, it's got nothing to do with uh, switching camps or saying that you don't you don't want to be associated with this group for political expedience or you you sort of shun your back and turn your back against this group the point is when you get to my age you know everybody i have very close friends in the mmd very close friends in the pf very close friends in the upnd you know that you know what that does you know what does that age does that because you know everybody so mm -hmm. so i said that to say emmanuel is a friend of mine and i don't know what's going on of course the authorities are going to tell us and whenever they do tell us we'll we'll take it from there you know we'll as 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 the as people say on social media you go wherever the evidence takes you yeah uh, the other thing I wanted to mention before I get into my verbal dissertation is you guys know that Tassila Lungu has just recently withdrawn her defamation case against the new diggers. The story, as you guys remember, uh, news diggers had published a report by the invest, um, environmental agency. Okay. Uh, they published a report where they talked about the sequence of events within the Mukula smuggling scandal. 
And there were several people that were mentioned in that report. Tassila Lungu was there. The president was there. Jin Kapata was there. Uh, uh, Honorable Given Lubinda was there. And and these are things we know. And, and this is the thing, guys. You know, power, it doesn't matter who has it. Power corrupts. But absolute power corrupts absolutely. You know, whenever in America they call them yes men. You know, if you if you're at a place where you're never challenged, you're never questioned, there are no checks and balances. You do whatever the hell you want to do in the way you want to do it with whomever you choose to do it with. That was the scandal of Mukula. Now, guys, this is what I find amazing about Zambian politics, is that the issue of Mukula and the mining sector in this country, these are huge, big scandals. Guys, there are people making multiplied, multiplicity of multitudinous tens of millions of dollars. And they're doing it right under our noses. And they're using political power, political influence, political connections. And, and we're, we're arguing about Mutala Mwanza. We're arguing about uh, just Natasha. You know, we're making a big hoopla about uh, Ben Lombe. We're, we're, we're talking about, you know, all kinds of stuff. And yet the very soul of our nation is what, we sh is what should be front and center. Guys, here's the thing, and I know you've heard this, but, but it bears repeating. The goal of any administration is to leave the country better than what they found. That's the goal. It's never, or at least it should never be about self-aggrandizement. It should never be about enrichment. This is why moving forward, no pun intended, we need to move into the stratosphere of not only self-reliance, but we need to begin to elect officials that are self-sustaining. I mean, officials that, that they don't go in into office poor as dirt, okay? The way it used to be. You know, you want to be president, but you don't have anything. You don't have anything to your name. You don't have any real estate. You don't have any viable businesses. You don't do anything worth a damn. And then you wake up one morning and say, oh, I don't want to be president. Such a person should be nowhere near the presidency. Why? So we, that's what we need to move into. So anyway, I thought I'd, I'd share that with you. Let's talk. What are we talking about? We're talking about, I wanted to come up on here and, and give you an update on the NPF, the Notorious Patriotic Front thugs that used to control City Market, Lumumba Road, um, Kalusha Walia Road, and Simon Mwewa Lane. This jurisdiction, you see, let, let me explain something. During the NPF, the Notorious Patriotic Front, the city was divided in zones, okay? There were zones, not, not, not wards, okay? Not uh, 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 sections, they were zones. Zones that were determined unofficially by Kadas. Kadas would decide, okay, Ukufmapadia, Ukufikapa. Ukufmapadia, Ukufikapa. Inoenchende, Yesu. Starting from there up to here, this is our territory. We control everything that happens in our territory. And so they took it upon themselves to name the territory. So in this area, we had Muke, who is very well documented on my page. I used to have run-ins with Muke almost every day. And this is the thing that I didn't like about Kadas. Uh, you know, Kadas, 
lero mo leseka maro wale fo coach i didn't like that unpredictability of kadas today you're laughing tomorrow he's threatening to cut your throat very unpredictable people very unstable people that you didn't know where you stood with them you know and in this area we had muke who was like the boss of of this area we had monga who was his lieutenant we had mutila who was the lieutenant of monga we had the suke okay and and we had a few others but it it was basically a group of about 10 guys now somebody may ask well, what were these guys doing every street vendor every booth and any business that was being run on the streets they collected the revenue for example the biggest money making scheme uh, during the npf were the phone booths this is how it used to work if you decided if you and i know this because i'm from this area I, i've i've worked in this spot for 33 years boys sabo mle mona pano everybody you see here ine badi nsanga shaba sangide yo i was here before anybody here came so i know the ecosystem of this area i know the mechanics of this territory first hand no rumor no innuendo first hand so one of the biggest money making juggernauts during the npf were the phone booths hear me when i tell you every single solitary quacha that was generated from phone booths was being generated and channeled to kadas Of course there was the initial fee that you pay to the council which was I think it's a 1699 kwacha you go to the council there why did pay 1699 and then the council says to you you where they for akubi ka booth mutam the council says okay you why did pay 1699 now go out into the world kabiye muchialo usakire malo malo popaka popaka yo 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 buti amane ufuona yo so yo waima waama nombu kusaya mutown therefore i have both oh inche ne amoneka the moment you look at a space and you identify a spot that you could potentially be interested in to erect a phone booth the moment you stop and say mm, i think i can i can can change yaka ka eka la ba fe bu yaka eka la wa ma the moment you do that somebody taps you on the back eh mfuna cha oh nde fo enche nde okay ole fo enche nde bora kuno ba kutwala kuri muke muke akwe ba ti ole fo kubika booth padia ni 5 pin as a one off payment 5000 manje every month without fail every 30 days kuri pila 250 kwacha pe month ngata wa kuri ati pila apa maro it is apa sabina ngo twala pila bambi so you pay the 5000 and then every month you pay 250 kwacha to muke and his crew now So the goal then became install as many booths as possible wherever possible. They didn't care about the traffic. I remember here and I've got a very interesting story to tell you about that and I'll get to it in, in a moment. You know, because there was no space to install booths, what they began to do was especially on Simon Moore Lane they began to put the booths along the main road not on the sidewalk mumusebo on the tarmac on the road 
They would occupy one lane and they would line them up booth after booth after booth after booth because the goal was the more booths, the more money. So they would just stack them up. So one day I approached Muke. I said, uh, Muke, if you want to become a booth sapper, Mumusebo, effectively, it means one lane, a bomba. If you are become a booth, 25, 30 booths, the vehicles, cars, will not be able to drive through because you have stacked so many booths, not on the sidewalk, but on the main road, and the two-lane road now has become one lane because you've 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 stacked so many booths. Do you know what Mukay's response to me was? Youth empowerment. If you are not that, you are from your mumsebo. Never youth him, but you are my wabadi. Any on that, you are from your. Why a queen? You are a carafe when I go. But any youth empowerment. Treba for a bite. He, and he was saying that, saying, no, well, this is youth empowerment. We're helping these people. But he knew good and hell well, the, the whole time, all he was doing was making an income for himself and his cohorts. It had nothing to do with youth empowerment. It was all about self-aggrandizement. It was all about making as much money as possible. That's all it was. So, this is the story I want to tell you. The, the day PF lost, the very first thing I did, I came here at 2 o'clock in the morning, and I hired about, I think it was about 10 street kids. I said, let's remove these booths from the street so that this road functions. The road is, is, is chaotic as it is. But when you add... A spanner in the works of putting booths, mumusebo. Remember, in the road, on the road, the main road, not on the sidewalk. Why they become mumusebo? They used to put the booths on the road. So I hired 10 street kids from 2 o'clock in the morning till about 5, and we removed every single booth and we swept the street. That morning, there was a new UPN decada. His name was, uh, uh, what was his name? Uh, give me a moment. I'll remember his name. Um, oh, what was his name? Uh, Oga. I think his name was Oga, yes. He, he claimed to be a UPND kind of. He came and he said, I said, no, this road needs to work. He said, Awe, fiche. So I said, no, oh God, the, the issue here is the road has to work. Oh my goodness. That was another fight. We battled for at least three, four weeks. And he just kept on trying to bring the booths, would remove them. He would bring them, would remove them. Until finally he stopped. So my update... If you come now to Simon Moore Lane, the road is clear because that's what roads are meant to do. Roads are for vehicles to drive through. Roads are not for you because you're a kada. You take a booth, why make a booth at youth empowerment when you know that Shempia, you know they said? Nonsense. Nonsense. We got rid of that rubbish. So when the UPND won, Abena Muke, Abena Monga, Abena Mutila, Abena Suke, Abena Fofo, Bon Sebari Butuka. They scattered. Today, uh, the update I have is that Muke spent some time in jail. He's out of jail now. Monga, who was a terror here. Monga 
joined a church. He's a papa follower. And this is what they do. It's like Innocent Kalimanshi. Innocent Kalimanshi today is a papa follower. Conveniently so. But I guarantee you, if the impossible were to happen, if PF were to come back to power, which is nonsense, which wouldn't happen, guess who would be the first one to leave the Papa and come back and say, now nah, where, I mean, when he's with the Papa, Monga is praying now, he's worshiping God, he's following this Papa, he uses the Papa as an umbrella to say, I'm reformed, I'm, I've changed, and he's praising. The moment things were, if, if things were to, to switch, and if the impossible were to happen, if ECL were to come back in the notorious patriotic front, guess who would come back? Abena Monga. Tuwebe nyaba kuipayadomba. If you could change to Areka, to Aisha Bwana, wome nyaba ringutsi, wopa ringutsi, wasokoro ke, tuwefoku babona wo, imo murande fi ati swa, to arabe pa babambara ba, wame mwane kwa ti, this is, eh, we are back. It's all for convenience. That's all it is. I mean, it's not real. That's not real. And I know some of you are going to start judging that and say, but Mwewa, you don't know what's in the heart. Please. Honey, you're not talking to a spring chicken. Okay. I've been, I've been around a few years. This is not my first rodeo. I've dealt with humanity before. The word of God says, the heart of man is desperately wicked, desperately deceptive. So if you say, if you want to say, if you want to say, if you it's all for convenience. There is no change of heart there. There is no transformation there. There is no road of Damascus experience there. It's all fluff. It's what it is. I know what I'm talking about. So so here it is. Now, let me also explain Innocent Karimanshi's role in the ECL administration. People don't realize how, how much of a role Innocent Karimanshi played in uh, Mr. Edgar Lungu's ascension to the presidency. Let me say that again. That's very important. People downplay, people don't realize the pivotal role that Innocent Kalimanshi played in the ascension of Edgar Lungu to, to the presidency. He was a very key component. And let me explain. And, and this is something that all political parties do in Zambia. And, and what I want to see, I want to see this change. I do. In my lifetime, I want to be able to see a political party go to a convention and multiple contenders are present, fighting for their case, arguing their point, saying, I'm the best candidate to lead this party. Unfortunately, in Zambia, we don't have that. convention <clears throat> Why? So once about ten o'clock they get they they fear being tired, eh? But at ten o'clock we go back So because of that, they hedge themselves. They make sure that no one opposes them to convention, so that why could they are unopposed? They camouflaged the word unopposed, they camouflage it and they present it to you as he is the most popular. People don't want anyone else except him. That's nonsense. That's, that's not how democracy works. Democracy works several contenders and then the people choose. So, by ECL, the convention, 
it was innocent kalimanshi abena innocent abena uh, uh, black apple well my guys were here they stopped and barred anyone else from entering the premises they beat people up within an inch of their lives they made sure that nobody penetrated the territory where the convention was taking place so that ba edgar lungu alone could emerge and be announced as sole candidate on the pf ticket that's how it worked now during the npf what i'm saying to you now uh would have attracted a violent reaction violent i mean it's not in my interest to attract unnecessary violent reactions i mean who who needs that aggravation we're living in in the 20s guys you know this is not 1945 and you know you weigh yourself you weigh if i say this valanjipaya valangochia it ain't up on facebook you know no way you are just afraid you are not brave if you're fine it's okay but at least i get to go home and be with my kids and my wife at least i can get i still get to have a, a an office that i can operate in and a place that i can call my own and nobody can disenfranchise me that's my choice but but if you think that no why didn't you say that during those days isn't it obvious why i didn't say it during those days listen the most dangerous person in the world is a person that has nothing to lose those are dangerous people and and there are people like that we can't always be all the same we're not cookie cut you know the word of god says precept by precept here a little there a little okay there there are people that do what you can't do i do certain things that other people can't do you know we're we're all part of the ecosystem so my point is this Innocent Kalimanshi's role in Edgar Lungu's ascension to the presidency has always been downplayed because they used intimidation and violence to 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 get to where they 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 were <clears throat> and uh we don't ever want to get to that place ever again <sighs> Those were very dark days. Some of you downplay it. Some of you, you know, you look back in retrospect and you think it was child's play. We were at a crossroads as a nation. We were. I mean, things were really bleak. Had the NPF won, and I said this, I posted this earlier, and and I'll say it again. Had the NPF won, the notorious patriotic front, had they won? No, no, sorry. Had they managed to rig the elections? because that's what it was. It wasn't about winning, it was about rigging the elections. And they attempted to do it. They tried to sabotage the internet. To this day, no one has ever conclusively talked about how the NPF attempted to sabotage the internet and how Zambians for the first time knew and discovered this thing called VPN. Nobody talks about that. Nobody. But that was a that was an inflection point in the electoral process of this country that was a very very important inflection point where voter meets candidate and in that moment they decide they say no no you're not going to take it from us this time you can do everything you want you can create all the machinations you desire not this time not today it's not going to happen and the npf tried everything they failed miserably miserably okay thought i'd share that with you i've spoken enough while and sana pafula you go run you go run and tell that this is dj mutati exclusive All right that's all for you today lovely viewers if you did enjoy the video please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below i will be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers once again i go by the name of Mutatim Pondo i love you peace i got to go